morning and welcome to Mount Olive Lutheran Church. It's the, well not quite the eve of Pentecost, because the eve of Pentecost would be tomorrow, but we're going to make the eve of Pentecost our theme for this day. Pentecost, of course, was the outpouring of the Holy Spirit sent by the Father and Christ, and so we will make that the theme for our Matin service this morning. The opening hymn is 498, Come Holy Ghost, Creator Blessed.
pledged, O God, to deliver me.
salvation is near to those who fear him, that glory may dwell in our land. Spirit of truth, 
whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him, for he dwells with you and will be in you. I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. Yet a little while in the world will see me no more, but you will see me. Because I live, you also will live. In that day you will know that I am in my Father, and you in me, and I in you. Whoever has my commandments and keeps them, he it is who loves me. And he who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I will love him, and manifest myself to him. O Lord, have mercy on us. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Join in the response reading. Forever, O Lord, your word is firmly set in the heavens. Even though you find no comfort and help in the world, yes, I am going to the Father for this reason, to assume my power and my reign and then to manifest these in you. And though I depart from you physically, I shall send you another comforter from the Father. He will always remain with you, for I know that you cannot abide in the world without a comforter. Until now, I, through my bodily presence, have been your comforter. You have taken delight in me and have felt secure and fearless, and you would like to remain with me. But now that you hear that you are about to lose this comfort, you are cast down in trouble. Yet my departure shall not harm you. Just remain my disciples and hold to me, and I will compensate you richly for the loss. For I myself will ask the Father to grant you the comforter who will stay with you forever, and neither the world nor the devil shall deprive you of him no matter how they rant and rave. He will strengthen you and make you courageous and bold, far better than I can do now by my physical presence. Moreover, he is wiser and more learned than all the world. Therefore, you will not lack for comfort, strength, courage, and wisdom. 
This is the comfort. The Christ advisedly prefaces it with these words. If you love me, keep my commandments. The dear Lord definitely foresaw the unrest that would be afoot in Christendom after his departure, particularly among the preachers and teachers. He knew that they would not remain in agreement, but would be split into schisms and factions. He completely abolished Moses for his Christians, and now he does not want us to be encumbered again with the intolerable burden of the law. For we invariably find that where law rules, laws rule, especially over the conscience, there is no end of commands and precepts. One law leads to a hundred new ones, and these hundred multiply into a hundred thousand. Therefore, Christ says, I do not impose anything else on you. I ask and demand no more than this one thing that you faithfully preach about me. Watch over my word and sacrament. Show affection and harmony among one another for my sake, and patiently bear the adversities that this entails for you. These are the brief commandments which Christ calls my commandments. And these, he says, I impose on you only if you love me and gladly keep them for my sake. For I do not want to be a Moses who drives and plagues you with menace and terror, but I give you commands that you can and will surely observe without coercion if you love me at all. If love is wanting, it is useless for me to give you many commandments, for they would not be observed anyhow. Therefore, if you want to keep my commandments, see that you love me, and think of what I have done for you. It is proper that you should love me, for who am about to give my life for you and to shed my blood for you. Do this for my sake. Live in harmony and friendship with one another. At the same time, adhere steadfastly to me in your preaching, bear with one another in love, and do not introduce schisms and factions. For I have richly deserved your loyalty. It is hard for me to accomplish your redemption, and it costs me my life. I am hurling myself into death and into the jaws of the devil to deliver you from sin and death, to destroy the power of hell and the devil, and to present you with heaven and all that I have. I will gladly pardon you if you err and sin at times, even if you fall grossly, also if you are weak and frail, but only if you return to me. Manifest your love again and forgive one another as I do you, so that your mutual love will not be destroyed. Christ begins his admonition here, but later he will extend it and stress it more in order to impress this on their minds for his hour of departure. For he knew well, as I have said, that there would be many who would adorn themselves with his name and boast of being his disciples and preachers of the gospel, but would set their own reputation, glory, and honor above Christ's blood and death. They would not esteem Christ's grace and ineffable love and all that he did to accomplish our redemption highly enough to jeopardize or surrender their own pleasures or honor or power for it. They would not deprecate their own knowledge and cleverness because of their reputation for smartness, wisdom, and learning is a greater consequence of them than Christ and the pure doctrine of the gospel. We continue with the singing of the um, canticle, the, the Te Deum, we praise your God, we rise.
family on Marge Moan, who passed away this past week on Tuesday, also for our country in this pandemic and for um, the city of Minneapolis in the riots that are taking place. We need help for prayer. Thank you. 